is not bad for parts. Much fewer parts than the double air yeah. As far as maneuverability and stuff, do we have to use uh, like cut breaks and stuff like that in order to really take those turns? Um, I don't. They wouldn't work. If your shot actually is also a spool, then you have oh, one break. Yeah. So you can't use cutting breaks unless it's only actually in front. Yeah. It, it all depend on the course that they choose. It's impossible they they choose an extremely tight course. Uh, where it, the open differential has advantages, and it's possible they choose more of a um, wide open course. But first year team, I'm, like I said, I'm not so worried about how you place. Um, you're, to me, the main goal is, you, it's not realistic to win yeah. in the first year. Um, the main goal is not to break. So that, and the main way, to, the best way to prevent breaking, um, failing, <laughs> breaking, is uh, this? I don't know if any of you have read this one yet. Um, so I went on the forums and um, pulled posts that I thought were interesting. And you know, I'm sure you've been reading the forums a lot, but um, there's some very wise stuff in here. Let's see on failure. This guy. Testing is the number one way to get a durable car. So every day, the goal is to try to break the car and beef it up where needed. Eventually, the blank required to break the car push the limits of what the drivers are willing to do. Uh, and this is a discussion on whether it should be a heavy car or a light car. And they say, light cars are fine as long as they're not right. Don't go paper thin, but um, heavy is not necessarily better. So, so the more. The strategy I'm thinking of, the strategy in favor of a solid axle um, is if you can finish the car earlier, you have more time to test, and then you have more chances to fix problems. Um, so it, it won't perform ultimately as well as a um, independent car, you know, lap time wise. It'll be a few percent slower, but by testing it more, your drivers are better, and it's much less likely to. Um, so it's kind of a weird decision because it's not apples to apples. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're willing to work hard, and, I, and so I really do mean, you know, 20 plus hour weeks every week and working all of January. And so I don't know how many of you are willing to do that. So make sure that, um, sorry, I'm sorry to build a solo team. <laughs> you're like, well, it's not relevant to us. Um, Make sure that the decision makers are aware of what hours everyone in the team is willing to put up. Yeah. So it's not just three of you going, yeah, I'm willing to do 20 hours, and then we got 10 other people that aren't. Yeah. If you if you got enough uh, mass, I think it takes um, probably seven or eight people, core people, willing to really put in the high hours. If you've got that, you can do the car. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's four. Then I'm worried. I don't think all 13 of you have to be those 20, 30 hour a week people, but uh, you got to have seven or eight. The things um, when when looking up like how I just even trying to find it, um, information on how I how to design um, like a spool situation is I like I'd have to we'd all have to like come to you or like the trophy truck design like I we can't. I find a lot on how to do independent rear or how to do the differential design. Um, yes. So I can like we can figure that out on a lot on our own. But I, I'm sure we could figure out the other one on our own. But I personally I don't know how you guys have felt, but I haven't been able to find like That's inspiration true. for ourselves. Yes. So we'd be asking yes. you and the trophy truck people how do we design this, as opposed to us being able to kind of figure it out. Yeah, your information would have to come from. And, and I only because it's so because it's so unprecedented. Like we see a lot of bad schools. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of great independent rears to judge yeah. up. Yep. So when we're pulling even like you can pull yep. like full cars off Gravcat and be like, oh, this is how they, this this yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. That's there's a good point. Like that for a trophy truck. Right. That so would, that would save time. The complexity is we have to now like have a source for that type of design. Right. You'd be more. You'd be more of a. And so there's more risk. That's true. That's introducing risk because it's a solution that has a, a good solid arc line. That's what I've done before. Yeah. So.
So is there really that limited information on the forums about the spool stuff? For Baja, it's like dry. It's well, spool, there's a lot. But but a good four-link solid axle, I'm yeah. not sure. that I, know, I haven't found one that did what uh, the Troy charts are doing. Yeah. There, I mean, there's just like, if you're just talking proportionally, there's by order of magnitude more on over differentials than like um, independent rear and all that type of stuff. I find it very hard to find at least good information. But that's not to say that we shouldn't go that route. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. That's so it, yeah, it's, it's more risk because it's, it's a different path. That's right. Yeah. And so there could be more time from that. I think you're. I think we got the issues in front of us accurately. That's good. Yeah. I don't think there's a wrong decision here. I think they're both good decisions, but um, for different reasons and different circumstances. Can you just choose? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it also happens to be something I'm thinking. I. Um, I don't, also the solid rear, I mean, if you, we're still going to need that core for seven or eight to put in those hours. I don't think that it reduces it by. It reduces it some. You're right. The whole, you're right that the whole car, it won't make the car from a hard car to an easy car. Yeah. It'll make it from a hard car to a slightly less hard car or a somewhat less hard car. <laughs> yeah. um, it means that for a given amount of work, you would finish earlier. That I think you can predict. But, um, but it also has to be that you have to want to do to the, do the design. Um, if, you, if you're pursuing a design you don't want to do, you're not going to be as motivated. Yeah. At the same time, there is always a tendency for students. I remember when I was a student, you always want to make things complex because it's cool. And you know, popularly, solid axles in the streetcar world don't have a great reputation. Um, they don't ride quite as well as an independent does. And um, they're typically not done very well. And so uh, when I did our formula car was technology. It didn't have no carbon fiber, but we had inboard suspension with rocker actuation. We had a fully triangulated tube frame that was impossible to make and took me took me and three other people two and a half months just to weld it. Um, so I I know that as I've gotten older and as I think all engineers get older, they start to appreciate simplicity more. Uh, and the, the, the simple design that doesn't perform quite as highly is better than the complex design that performs better. That's harder for students to know because they haven't built as many things. Um, so on the one hand, I, um, I'd like you to be aware of that bias that probably all of you have. But on the other hand, please don't choose a design that um, you don't want to do. I'm very good at, like, I think I'm good at saying things equally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which street cars are uh, independent? Like, is it like a Toyota Camry? Independent or dependent? Yeah. Most, um, almost everything now is independent. Um, Solid has a, just doesn't have a great reputation for ride. Um, it has a few, with, we have rubber bushings in a, in a street car. Solid axles have this, what's called axle tramp problem the rubber tends to shake. Um, it, it doesn't have any racing, but... Um, so do reason. independent rear suspension streetcars not use leaf springs? Oh, right, yeah. Ne leaf springs are terrible. Um, if you have a solid axle, if you have leaf springs, that's the Hotchkiss design. And the only advantage of it is that it's um, extremely cheap because you don't need any other links. Don't most cars have leaf springs on? No. For older cars? Only older, yeah. Coral springs are vastly better than trucks. Springs. Yeah, the trucks, yeah. I think my car is Oh, there are some trucks at Emily Springs, yes. I think my car is Because they're still hard to find us too. Yeah. But no serious race car. No no good race car at Emily Springs. They have, they have way too much friction. Um, I'm like, like a road, like your like, average car. Like a, um, the, the only recent cars that would have solid axle, Camaro, I think it still has solid axle. Mustang used to, and then it just switched. Independent. Um, Camaro. Why why do off roading cars tend to have like a Jeep or like an Xterra that we have? Mark talked about. Simple, durable. Uh, 
Uh, you don't care so much about ride. Mm, if you're four-wheel drive, it's less expensive. Tradition, they've been doing it forever that way, so they got the factories that are still doing it. Is it when the road is like like this, are you s still being able to maintain contact with the ground with both tires? Um, you, that is that is where independence better. When you have a single wheel bump, um, the independent suspension can follow that bump and not be um, not have the other wheel play into it, so to speak. You know how much of a loss there is? But That's a huge. I wish I knew the answer to that. I know when I worked at Ford, when I started at Ford, the Thunderbird had just switched from a solid rear to an inner rear, and I was so excited because I put that up and thought the solid rears were terrible. Um, and I asked the development engineer when I was in that, um, so how much better is it around the handling track when you hit a single or bump? And he went, eh. Really? What about, so I kind of brought this up last time, but. There's sections where it's there's have a hose and they're just spraying it on the ground and it's gonna dip. Yeah. So you're going through like six or eight or ten inches of water and mud. Yeah. It's super muddy. And you're going in and it's on turns and you don't have the slip that you would get on a dry, dusty, like you can spin around. But you're going through like like mud. Well, so, it's, so if it's slippery, then it's easier to get the rear wheel done. No, I understand, but no. it's not slippery. It's sticky. It's viscous. It's like it's like mud. You know, like if your tires are tr trying to trudge through mud. Yeah, it's oh, really I think you're going to slip like, yeah. though. Six inches, seven inches deep. Yeah. I think you're still going to slip, honestly. I would think it would be slippery. <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm not sure. I'm talking about a car trying to like trudge through. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it doesn't look that slippery. slippery. <laughs> okay, the one piece that I read. Um, so Oregon State's advisor was advocating independent and open differentials. Well, mostly open versus school. And the one piece where a school would indeed have trouble is it what's called an off-camber turn. So um, if it's flat ground and you're turning, uh, not so much a problem. If the hill's like this and you're turning around like that, understeer is more of an issue. And um, the spool will tend to drive you off course more. Yeah. If we felt like we could do the independent suspension, like we had the manpower yeah. to do it, mm -hmm. is it a clear choice to do the independent? Mm -hmm. Or is the only limiting factor being like, oh, because of the manpower, maybe consider spool? I don't think any, either of those to me is clear. That's why I hold it for me. Well, I agree you want to decide by this coming week, or probably middle of this week, you want to decide. Yeah. I would say keep learning, you know, keep um, studying the issue. The best decision you'll make is when you're in the best informed. So get to, uh, maybe write down the issues that you need to learn about, like survey the team, how many hours you're willing to put in uh, for the rest of the year or week. And are you willing to be here in January? You're right that if we have a lot of um, mass behind the effort, then that's a good argument. I mean, I know that I, I wouldn't be able uh, to work on it in January because I have intercession class yeah. in London, so I won't be in the Yeah. Is it going to be just like independent work and we could? have a Google Doc or something where we compile everything because I know I'm not going to be here in oh, January, but I'm still willing to work. I think right. January going to be building. The fabrication. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there will be some design. Yeah. You're right, there'll be some yeah. design. But mostly it's we need to crank parts out. Yeah. <laughs> we be able to, um, like the shop guys are going to hold at 5 and get there at 10. I mean, are we going to be able to have like night hours in the shop? Is yeah. That's yeah. super common. Yes. We need, um, so next semester we'll be hiring um, shop aides, and they'll um, make it some of you, and uh, they'll be there to keep it open later. Okay, without seeing there. Right. Okay. right. Going, going off of that, can we get like the classes for it, because however we get the credentials to get from there, like, can we get it like separately and get it quicker than, or 
everyone else. Um, you mean the badges? Yeah. You can go in now during yeah, the shop hours in the morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you'll have to do that on your own, okay. the, the, the badges. But just um, take the written test. That'll prove to the shop staff that you're ready to take the um, uh, practical test. The written tests, I don't think, are hard. Some of them aren't worth the best, but you can figure it out. Are you talking about just like the safety test? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, the safety badging test. Yeah. 